All right. So tonight's episode of the Barbarian Hour, we have a special guest from Campbell University, the Fighting Camels head coach, Scotty Sentez, Coach Sentez, a three-time All-American for the Chippewas of Central Michigan, correct? Uh, two-time, two-time All-American. Two-time. Were you in the yeah. weight class? Were you in the weight class with like Jordan Oliver? It was the first year you went up to 33. Was it it was like Jordan Oliver? Uh geez, oh Pete, who was in the weight? Steve Bell, Danny Mitchell. Were you in that weight or were you still at 25 then? I was in that weight. I, I think I was in that weight. Yeah. I wrestled Bell that year. That would that was my sophomore year, I think. When Dude, Bell was there, was Oliver. Yeah. Uh uh what's Graf? Graf, Hoch, yep. Hochstrasher, I think. Yep. Hofstresser was the there. Weight? Who won the weight? Uh, I think it was Oliver versus Hofstresser, right? Yeah, that's I think right. that's what it was. Oh, my God. And I then, think that was the year I took fourth. That was might have been the year I took fourth then if it was Hofstresser and Oliver. Okay. Was that yeah. You were All-American at 25 and 33, right? I did it my freshman and junior year, 25 and 33. Yeah. Okay. And then it was your true freshman year when you were at 25, right? Yep. Yep. True, true freshman. And you beat I, was, Bedley, I was huge. <laughs> you beat Bedley on for third and or seventh and eighth, right? Yeah, we wrestled three times that year, all at the end of the season. Did you beat him every time? So he actually beat me in the duel. I I never get the end of I'll never hear the end of this. He beat me in the duel, and that's how Kent State like ruined our streak, our our regular season duel streak. And it was a huge celebration. Tom Borelli laid into me in the locker room. Uh, and then I wrestled him, uh, in the, in the conference finals of the Mac and I, I beat him up pretty good. Uh, and then I, I wrestled him for seventh and eight and, and beat him pretty good there too. And then, but he got that, he got that duel and I never, I never hear the end of it, man. Yeah. Cause you guys won the, I think you won the Mac. The only time you guys didn't win the Mac is finally when I think central Michigan won the Mac. The last time you didn't win the Mac from one to when you guys Lost it the first time would have been OU, Ohio. You won in 01, mm-hmm. and then you won every MAC championship after that. And then the last time you guys didn't win it was when Mizzou joined the league. Yeah, Mizzou, and I think, um, you and I was in it too. Yes, I don't even know if we took second, we might have even taken third to be honest. That league was loaded then, man. That was a yeah, really, those, those like five years that they were in at the same time, four years. Whatever it was, was like the league was absolutely stacked. But you guys had a stranglehold on it. And I remember you came in. One of the greatest promotional video ever was you and Gerard Trice. And you were in a a, a, a little kid. Oh, my God. You, you wouldn't that? remember that. Hey, I've done so much to try to get rid of that video. Because oh. like every five years or so, it'll start popping up and all my guys will be Giving me crap for it, man. I thought it was buried, buried deep enough, but I guess not. Uh, well, that's just out of my memory. I haven't seen it in <laughs> yeah. 10 years. Um, yeah, and that was, who were you guys, were you promoting a duel with, With was it Mizzou or was it Ken? Who was it? Oh, man, it might have been Mizzou or something. I don't think it was Ken. Yeah. I love it, dude. Yeah, you were, because were you guys roommates? Were you and Gerard Trice actually roommates? No, no, we we just hung out. I was roommates with Bennett and and some of those guys, but those were the guys I hung out with. I hung out with Trice a lot, so he was uh he was a character. You guys came and in. He's with coaching us. now too. I don't know if you saw that. He's got a coaching job now. Trice's. Yeah. What's uh the new the new school, uh the Bears. Uh oh oh Morgan State. He's at Morgan State. Yeah. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Yeah, he got back into it. He's he's loving it out there, man. He's back in the game. Dude, Gerard Trice was an absolute freak and a great talent, and he had a good personality. Yeah, yeah, he's, he was him. a good coach. He he would actually, like, scout. Like, I would listen to him because Tom's just, you know, go out there, whatever the work's been done, right? You know, he would he would know everybody you were going to wrestle. He'd say, hey, lead this leg. You know, the guy's going to do this, and when he does that, it'll set him up for that. And I'd listen to him because he, he was spot on. Like, he studied film for everybody on the team, and people might not know that about Gerard, but he knew wrestling. He was, he was, he was talented. He fought for like 10 years, didn't he? Yeah, he was fighting, I think, maybe maybe Bellator. Yeah. And the thing about him is he was always I, – I always felt like he was really undersized as a heavyweight. 
but he was so mm-hmm. athletic and talented and quick and had great balance and he could get away with things that, you know, guys who were undersized could get away with. Right. Yeah. I think his problem was he was impatient. He, he wanted, you know, it was showtime trice, right? So he wanted to go in and score a bunch of points. And in that time you still had the big heavyweights that did nothing, right? It was a way, way more boring weight class than it is today. And he'd go in there and try to double over and drive and, and he would get frustrated at the one Oh matches. Cause he wanted to have those, you know, eight, seven matches that the little guys were having. And, and that those are the ones he, he, you know, he would fall in is when it was just the guy did nothing long enough that he got frustrated and made a mistake. Did you guys have the number one recruiting class in the country? I think my year we were number two and then there was a couple late additions and they redrew it as number one. Some some places. I don't remember who we were competing against, but we had some 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 really tough, tough guys in that class. You guys had the guy that came in. Um, it was the number one, two fifteen. That was it, Dubose. Yeah, Marcel Dubose. Yeah, it, he passed away, right? Yeah, I think he was. You know, he got shot. You yeah, because <laughs> he was. Was he from yeah. Detroit? From Detroit. Yeah, right? he's from Detroit. I think. I think he, he got in trouble at Central. He, he beat some guys up. He in a frat threw him out the window or something, and uh, they they you know Tom let him go, and then he went back, and I think he was he started getting into fighting and backyard fighting, and and uh you know. I think in the, the news article, it said he was selling CDs and, wow. you know, altercation happened and it just, you know, he's no longer with us. Yeah, that that's wild because I remember him and Tyrell Fortune used to go back and forth, right? Yeah, he was he was talented because at that time we had the Senate brothers who were multiple time All-American big guys. And uh, I saw those guys do a 45 minute match and, Mar- you know, 1-0 match, you know, 0-0 match with these dudes that are senior multiple time you know, all American. So he was a stud with an unlimited potential. He was, he was a freak. And Senate's where it was. It, I want to say Christian Senate or Brandon. Am I right there? Did I even get yep. that? Yeah. Oh, Christian and Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. They were really good. I Listen, what coach Borelli did at central Michigan, you know, from the late nineties to now was like what he is. I mean, early nineties to now, because he went from Lake superior state to central, I believe was the move. And uh, I've talked to, you know, Jason's been on the show before and do what that guy has done is incredible. Um, how does a Florida guy go from Florida? What part of Florida are you from, Scotty? Fort Myers. Okay. So you're from yeah. Fort Myers. My mom and dad have a house in North Fort Myers. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, that's where I'm at. North Fort Myers, Riverdale. It's called Riverdale, but yeah. <laughs> I think that's the North Fort Myers, district. Riverdale. Yeah. I think that's the school district my parents actually live in. Um, <laughs> what, what's, what's crazy is, um, windmill village. That's where they, from. the, 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 the shell factory is right across the street from them. You know where that oh, is? Yeah. I live, I, Hey, I live across the street from the shell factory. Yeah. Off, my off, mom and dad uh, literally live right across the street. Yeah. Oh yeah. So they're right down the road from me. I was Buckingham. Uh, you know, like if, if they head towards the, the gas station away from the drawbridge. Yeah. Like I'm halfway down that road off Buckingham. Yeah. I mean, we're, 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 we're probably neighbors. Yeah. Um, I, when I go down there, it's always like really nice. Um, I like where my parents live. Well, I did not know you're from Fort Myers. That's crazy. Um, yeah. So, so how does a Fort Myers guy end up in Mount Pleasant, Michigan? Tell me the story. Okay. Well, I, I think there's a couple, couple reasons, right? In that time, flow wrestling hasn't really taken off. I think it was a little bit more of a level playing field because the coaches that did their homework and really deep dived, they could find these hidden gems, right? And, and uh, I was wrestling all over, but, you know, it wasn't getting recorded. It wasn't getting put online the way it is today. Uh, well, it just so happened that my my I'm from Michigan. I was born in Michigan. I was a baby when I moved to Florida. My dad had followed Central Michigan. He knew about Tom. And, uh, you know, we're all big Michigan, U of M, Michigan fans, football fans. And my brother went to U of M. And so my, all my family's in Michigan. My dad retired in Michigan now. So my dad said, Hey, I'm going to send you this camp. I want you to check out central Michigan. They have a good wrestling program. They can develop guys. And they knew that Tom, uh, you know, I'd worked at the Citadel and was disciplined. And I, at that phase of my life, I needed discipline. So my dad sent me to a camp and, and, uh, after the camp, they, they brought me back for a, a visit, which I didn't want to be on. My dad made me go, uh, you know, the first day of the, the, the official visit, I was with the Senate brothers 
And I said, hey, guys, I appreciate being here, but I, I, my dad made me come. I don't want to be here. Let's just have fun. And uh, I just fell in love with the place when I started realizing who the Senate brothers were out of high school and who they were in college, how much they were developed. I started looking at the team of guys like Mike Miller, who ended up being an NCAA finalist. You know, the team before I got there was top five in the country. You had Wynn Mahalik was actually there. Uh, and I was like, man, like, how did I never hear this school? Like, it, it, there's something to it. If you can develop all these guys, he wasn't getting the blue chippers. And uh, at that point, I was sold when I, I went on one visit and I canceled all my other visits right afterwards and, you know, jumped on board. So it's crazy to think you went in right away, you know, to, to say what you're saying, like you were a guy, an unheard of guy. You you show up, you're an mm -hmm. NCAA All-American as a true freshman. How how do you even do that? How great is the system for a guy to come in who's who's in the system for under one year? You weren't even in because you're in high school yeah. in May, the year before. Mm -hmm. So March the year before you're in high school, winning winning a state title in Florida, right? Yep, yep, yeah. And, and, and so, so yeah, I went in the summer, and you train, you lift, you work hard, you wrestle hard. I mean, it's just re really tough. And at that time, there's a kid named Matt Steintrigger that was there who was really tough. He's a DCC kid, and I think he was ranked like twentieth. And uh, at at that time, I think things were 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 a little bit rocky with Matt. And I was a giant. I was just a giant. I weighed, I was heavy, but I was, uh, I wasn't very good at wrestling, but I was willing to do what he told me to do and train hard. And so I made the cut to 25, um, you know, and I think just, just having to do all that extra work to make weight, I, I think just kind of expedited the process of, of making me stronger, making me better, you know, making me mentally tougher. Um, and, and I think, you know, for me, cutting weight was a little bit of the answer in terms of, you know, kind of uh, sparking a little bit more success earlier on because a lot of guys I wrestled I wasn't as good as, I, but I was enormous four hours after weigh-ins. I was absolutely enormous. So when you talk to guys about cutting weight a little bit and sometimes you got to make a sacrifice and, 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 and be big for the weight class, right? Because mm -hmm. if you want the truth, you know, you and I talked UFC partnership earlier. You want to know the thing that wins for, for college D1 wrestlers? And the D2 guys and the D3 guys from NCA, whatever level they're at. And if they're it's the one hour weigh in and it's 18 mm -hmm. to 22 weigh ins a year. You guys on your college team right now are doing more weigh ins in the season than the UFC fighters are doing in their whole career, probably 70, 80% of the roster, right? And I'm not saying the whole roster. There's guys who do 50, 60 weigh ins, right? But there, you got your eighteen to twenty-two weigh-ins weigh -ins in a year, and one of them are they're, they're, the duels are one hour, the tournaments are two hours, right? You're competing. That's how I think yeah. wrestlers win in the UFC and the Bellator and all these other things, because the weigh-ins are nothing for them. They're getting that twenty-eight hour, twenty thirty hour depends, you know, because they'll weigh in on Friday morning. They won't fight until Saturday mm -hmm. evening, right? So it's like I, that's my opinion on the weigh-in, and it sounds like you are a firm believer in being massive for the weight and sometimes it gets hard on you and you gotta, you gotta make something hard on you. And that's, I think what it sounds like you needed a little bit, right? Yeah. I think it depends on your mentality, right? I've seen guys totally crumble when you try to make them cut weight. Uh, they just don't have the, the, the mental fortitude to do it. And it's, they're not, you can't teach it and they're better off just getting better at wrestling, getting bigger. And it might take a little, little longer. Um, and then there's other guys that I think going down, that's what they need to do because it keeps them disciplined. It, it, it gets them to work out. It kind of helps develop mental toughness and, and, and all of those things develop confidence. And for me, I, I needed to do that. If he had put me up, I, I wouldn't have been a 25, I'd probably have been a 49. I would have been going out. I'd just in terms of where I was, I just wasn't, wasn't locked in in that way as a, as a, you know, coming out of high school, coming out of Fort Myers, I wasn't. <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to do things the right way. And that forced me to do the things the right way. And uh, I did it the wrong, kind of the right way, but the wrong way in terms of diet and stuff. But I learned that stuff, you know, because I found my way in the lineup being big that the coaches put time in to teach me how to eat. And, and those are things I was learning come January, February to get things right for, for, for March. I didn't, I learned it pretty late. You know, I got my butt kicked a couple of times later in the season, the bad weight cuts caught up and, and uh, you know, being able to put myself in the lineup, I was able to, you know, they they had a little more skin in the game with me. They'd kind of teach me the way um, where I would have had to figure it out myself somewhere else. Is Scotty Sentez an All-American at 149? 
Yeah, I was huge. I, oh, am I? No, I don't know. Could you I'm have? Not. Could you? I'm saying, <laughs> could you have been an oh, all no. at 149? Nah. No, absolutely not. I think I think the reason why the only reason I was winning was I was enormous. You know, my one of my best friends, his name's Eric Coverly, and he was one of the most talented wrestlers, especially coming out of high school. I mean, Super 32 champ. He was one of the top ranked guys, and he was just so good at wrestling, man. The slickest, one of the slickest wrestlers uh, coming out of high school. Uh, and he would give he just gives me crap all the time because he'd watch me and I just didn't do anything but squeeze on your head and then try to throw a leg in you know like i didn't know what i was doing um but i was gonna do it the ugly way and as hard as i can and i was a giant so cutting weight obviously something you're, you you had the side you had a frame you had a big long massive frame were you the tallest guy in the weight whenever you guys were weighing in at the nsa tournament there was only one person ever taller than me and that was jason ness and when we wrestled and he was taller than i was and it was the weirdest thing to have somebody taller than me because I had never felt it before. Um, but, yeah, How'd he's the only one him? ever. How'd you do with Jason Ness? Uh, I think it was like five to two. He beat me five to two. I injured him that year. I hit a standing Grammy and he hit his neck and it took him out for like a month. So that's my claim to fame right there. I took took Jason Ness out for a month. Did he, did he win <laughs> the match or did he default? No, he won the match. No, he was tough. Tough. He was just better than me at that at that point. I think that's the year he did the uh, where he beat Dan or he beat Dennis, the last second takedown. So it was that thirty three? Yeah. He, yep, thirty three. Okay. Wow, dude, that is amazing. So right out of the gate, you're seventh, and then what did you take as a junior? You said you're an all American as a junior. What place did you take that year? Owen 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 two as a sophomore, and then uh, took fourth as a, a junior, and then senior I was blood round. Who beat yeah. you in the blood round, dude? Who was it? Uh, one of the twins from uh, Minnesota. Was Dardanes? It Dardanes, one of the Dardanes. And I was up big. I I wasn't in shape. Listen, I never got in shape that year. I had a uh, I had back surgery. I didn't run. They told me not to run ever again. Things like that. And I should have just ran anyways. You know what I mean? Like part of what made me good was being big, and being able to be in shape and go hard and be big. And I just like I got tired. I think I was up like five zero, which for me, if I get up and I can get on top, it's done. If I get up by two, it's done because I wasn't good on feet. And uh, I just got – he got me tired, man. And that was at 33, right? But, yeah, 33. That was my senior year. Yeah. You never made it up to 41? Nope, never made it up. I, I love your honesty about it. You're like, no, nah, no, wouldn't be an All-American at 41, 49. Wouldn't, wouldn't do it. Nope. I like no. that. I mean, I think that, that your guys can take something from that, though. I think your guys can understand, um, you know, the battles you were fighting and and being big for a weight class is sometimes good, especially when you got the length like you have, right? Yeah, I would say that the, the, when I when I push guys to cut weight, it's usually when they're not very good yet. And that's what I tell them. I go, hey, look, you're not very good yet. You can get really good by cutting weight because that's going to force you to do extra workouts. It's going to force you to do this and that. You know, I had a guy that walked on my team. He, you know, he came around for an entire year, not not very good at wrestling. Kept asking and asking, never even like placed in the, the state. I go, look, you're not good enough to, to wrestle on our team. Uh, but he kept coming around. And I said, okay, how much do you weigh? He told me his weight. I go, okay, if you cut down to 65, I'll let you join the team. Cut down, you know, the next year, right? Like he actually can help us in the room. The dude's pushing guys. He's training hard. You know, he got a lot better. And I remember there's some recruits that came and, uh, you know, I, I heard that they were working out with them. And uh, he was like beating an Ohio State champ. This is a kid that never. You know, he just developed so much more uh, because he had to go through a little bit of that 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 sacrifice. Right. Like that that developed confidence and, and strength just doing that. So the next year I let him go up a weight. You know, I actually let him go up two weights. But, uh, you know, I think just getting that spark of, of learning some learning, learning the discipline and, and the suck a little bit and how to live there and, and, and fight through it, I think is important. Who was it? Uh, his name's Patrick Adams. He's on our team right now. OK. Yeah. Patrick figured it out. Yeah, I figured it out, man. He's one of my favorite guys. You know, he, like I said, he ain't a killer. He ain't a killer. Like I was pumped last year. He had some of his first wins. I took him to like life university open and he, you know, I think he ended up placing there and man, like we were just, I mean, I was cheering like it was the world championship, the dudes, you know, in round two of the life university, just cause I knew, you know, how far he had come and, and the sacrifices he, he had made. And like I said, he's one of, he's one of my uh, favorite guys on the team, even though, you know, he's, he he may or may not ever pop into that lineup, right? It's just he's he's not there. But man, he's he's come a long way, you know. 
Did you love to see that? That's a part of, I mean, that's, that's probably the best part of the job seeing an average guy or below average guy come in, make your team, you know, a guy who's going to get a degree out of it and maybe wouldn't have gone to college otherwise. I mean, yeah. that, that, that's like a special part of what you guys do with, with coaching. It's not always about the guys who make the NCAA tournament or win the SOCON or, uh, you know, show up on the UFC fight pass and impress everybody. It's like, it's about the guys who are doing it every day. They're grinding. Maybe they don't get the credit they deserve, but that the guy, you know, he's, he's made changes in his life and, uh, He's yeah. making strides. It sounds like, I, yeah, now I'm going to look out for this guy. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, my comment earlier, we talked, I talked, uh, you know, why I think wrestlers win um, at the UFC, right? Do you think mm-hmm. that I'm off with that? Or is that why wrestlers are so successful in the UFC? It's because we, we win the way. And I think, is, is, do you, how do you feel about that? Uh, I mean, I, I never thought about, it. I've seen people talk about guys missing weight and then a wrestler will never miss weight in the UFC. Right. I, uh, or at least rarely. Um, so no, I agree with it. Now that you say that, I think there's a lot of things, but I think, yeah, that's probably a big one is they're used to doing it. They've done it a lot. They know how to, how to, uh, how their body's going to feel down to weight. Cause they've done it so many times. They know how to perform there and for them, it gets easier, right? Their, their bodies are probably feeling a lot better for those fights. Uh, and, and if you, if you hadn't been exposed to that in other sports, like you might be thinking you're hurting and just, there's a little bit of that mental edge there. And you get a pound. I don't know if you know that they get nine tenths of a pound. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Like one fifty five. That I think they got to make one fifty five point nine. I think if you just hit one fifty five, and it's one fifty five point nine, I think you're good. Yeah, that's, that's what sweet. I. I, yeah, I mean, that like, works. I don't know the rules of it, but I'm like, I always yeah. listen to the thing, and they're announcing what they weigh, and I'm like, wait a minute, he's not one fifty five. He's one fifty five point five. He's one fifty five point seven. He didn't make weight. Yeah. Your dude rolls in and he's 157.1. He ain't wrestle 157. <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't I don't know how that works, but yeah, you're no, right. I'm saying yeah, with I, us though, I, we know how ours oh, work. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You're, you're making it, yeah. Yeah, you're 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 a 65 pounder now. You're not a 57 pounder mm-hmm. anymore. It's wild. Um, talk about the UFC and how UFC fight pass came to be a thing and how many matches. Well, first off, give me the lineup this year. Um, and how you guys started with UFC Fight Pass. But what's the lineup this year with Campbell Wrestling and the ca- the Fighting Camels on UFC Fight Pass? Okay. I, I can't tell you exactly how it started because I can't remember, but we were at the NCAA tournament. Uh, Zach Bogle, who does stalemates, and Josiah Harisco were our guys. Somebody from UFC had been in talking talking to them. I think it started with Zach at, at stalemates. And I think Zach was talking to one of the guys from the UFC and they basically explain like, yeah, you could probably cover these duels and not pay them like you pay fighters, right? Like people would probably like it. I think that there's a, a, a fan base there for it. And so it started, to, I think Zach started to kind of get them, you know, things clicking in their head. They came out to, to, to the NCAA. I don't think a lot of people were really meeting with them. Um, we ended up talking to them. I don't remember if I talked to, to, to Walker or if I talked who, who works with the UFC or if I talked with um, Rob Haydack, who's, who's with like Cage Fury. Um, but I talked with one of those guys and they said they wanted to do a wrestling event if we'd be interested. And I said, actually, I, I would be. And I have uh, uh, there's this military one I've been wanting to do called uh, Battle at Battle at Brack. And uh, they wanted to do it. They jumped in. Uh, we we had our first event. We wrestled on Veterans Day on the military base against uh, University of Michigan, who were the returning NCAA runner ups in North Carolina. So we wrestled both of those guys back to back. Figured it would draw more eyes, wrestle in two teams instead of one, get the viewership up, kind of show some value in, in our sport in terms of viewership numbers. Um, and the numbers did really, really good. Uh, and and so uh, the, the production was really great in terms of being, uh, as a competitor, my guys thought it was the greatest thing on earth, right? They're wrestling on the stage. They had all the military there, you know, lined up. You know, even this year, we're coming out of the backs of airplanes, uh, and so it was just a really cool for experience for for the competitors. And then also it was a great deal for them because there was a lot of new eyes tuning in and logging in and and, uh, you know, getting memberships that they said, oh, there, there's a viable uh, reality that that uh, we could jump into wrestling. I think that there's a lot of crossover there. And uh, in that time, you know, you're starting to see all these Penn State guys kind of getting into fighting and making a name for themselves. So. It was really the perfect storm. Uh, they they were asking me about ideas. I was trying my best to kind of tie them to people. Uh, I know Rob Eater eventually got involved and 
you know, started la- helping land some, some more schools. And, you know, now we're where we're at today, where we have a full card. So for us, we'll have four events on there. Um, November 1st is our first one. So we're just a week away. That's a Wednesday, uh, trying to be one of the first D1 duels of the season. We're going to wrestle uh, Army and uh, at the military base at Fort Liberty. And NC State's going to follow it up by wrestling Presbyterian. So you'll be, there'll be, you know, two duels there. Uh, then two weeks later, we head up to Wyoming. We do battle at the barn. Uh, it's at this tiny barn in Wyoming. You know, they have us working out in the Wyoming wrestling room, uh, bussing us in with the Wyoming team is what they're telling me uh, to this place. We'll have wild horses, you know, sitting on hay bales. Uh, you know, I'm sure Branch will come in on a horse or wear blue jeans and a cowboy hat probably, uh, you know, and it's just the only ones that are going to be there are uh, basically the the cowboy fans and the cowboys and, and uh, so it's going to look really cool visually on the screen. It's going to be in this hot barn, but freezing outside with the horses and stuff. So uh, that one will be pretty neat. Uh, and then we fast forward to mid-December. We'll have a quad with uh, where we'll all wrestle each other with Purdue, Stanford, North Dakota State. So see a little bit of variety there. And then we'll cap it off and end our season with UFC Fight Pass uh, with with us versus App State, which is a pretty – Pretty, pretty great rivalry that I, I don't know how many people know about, but it's uh, it, it gets pretty, pretty intense, man. It's a, it's a fun, fun duel. So, um, yeah, man, we have an exciting, you know, some exciting cards with them. I love it. I love that you guys get into it. And, and like, I, you know, we were talking earlier, you uh, at, at Campbell, you've always been on the cutting edge and the top of the social media scene um, as far as bringing people uh, to the sport seeing what you have, spotlighting your athletes, uh, the experience, the journey, and it's every week. And there's always a piece or something put together weekly. And you guys, nobody grinds at it harder than than, than Campbell does, in my opinion. But, uh, you know, I saw the Winton Dinkins thing this summer when you brought your freshman down and mm-hmm. they must be doing summer classes. But why are you guys so, so invested in the social media end of what you do at Campbell? Yeah, so it started with a guy named Josiah Risco. He, he runs Fanco Wrestling. Uh, he was our first social media director. He came in. Uh, he started doing some really cool content, trying to give storylines. We thought wrestling needed storylines. You know, people want to follow people. That's how you develop a brand. Uh, and as he did a better job and he was kind of really cutting edge, uh, you know, we saw the, the the followers go up. And with the followers, we were getting better recruits. Fundraising was better. You know, our alumni were getting drawn in more. Um, you know, more teams wanted to wrestle us. Uh, the guys were excited. The guys were, were, you know, being portrayed even at times, sometimes bigger than they actually were. So then they're starting to live up to it. So we saw even more success on the mat. If there were certain things we wanted to kind of put in the back of their head, we could kind of use use social media in that way. If we want to get them fired up, we could kind of, you know, poke a bear and, and get them to say something back to us and our guys would see it. So uh, there was just a lot of really cool strategies. So he was the one that really got it started. He was he's a fantastic uh you know he has a youtube channel he's fantastic uh big wrestling guy and then you know each year we kind of knew what we wanted to do and we just try to go a little bit more over the top right and and you know we don't want to try to match anybody we're just trying to, to to lead it and find new ways to get people excited about the sport try to get more eyes on it try to make it interesting try to make it fun and uh, that's you know people want to go watch wrestling matches uh, especially people that have never seen wrestling because they want to have fun and uh, social media is a good way to kind of, you know, create a little bit of electricity and, and and do some things like that. So we really try to use that as a tool. So that was Coach Cole out who started that, right? So Cole had brought in uh, Josiah. Yeah. And, and, is, and is Josiah was with us guys? for one year. So he's nope. not with you anymore? Then we had Matt Mims. So he actually took a job with a YouTuber, a famous North Carolina YouTuber. I think it's the same company that does, uh, man, it's – He's like, a, what, what's one of the most famous YouTubers? He lives in North Carolina. He's like a kid guy? one. He's what? Like the kids love him. I don't even, uh, he's super famous, man. Like yeah, the guy that, anyways, he works for the that trucks. company. The guy that, yeah, he does that. Trucks. Yeah, yeah. He works for the same company that does that. He makes like the thumbnails for, for, uh, for that guy. That's like, true. and he, you know, he, he runs the, the, the numbers in terms of when people will click and all, oh, like wow. he does it all for that. Yeah. He's all like, the analytics, huh? All the analytics, he loves it, man. And then, uh, then we had a guy named Matt Mims, who was our, our video guy last year, killed it for us, um, did a great job. And now we have a military guy uh, named Jake Strickland, who's awesome. 
Uh, the truth is it's really hard to keep a media guy because in athletics, it's a lot of work, especially for the type of media we're putting out and it doesn't pay a lot. And when you get really, really good and you are really, really good, you can do a lot less work <laughs> and make a lot more money. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, yeah, we've, we've gone through them, uh, you know, every two years or year just because they get way better opportunities for way less of a grind, you know? Yeah. That, and if you can't fault a guy for leaving, if they're going to no, get yeah, they're, they're more the last yeah, time in, right? Yeah. I went to Josiah's wedding, you know, Matt Mims was at our duel yesterday. Like I love the, I still contact him and, and when I, if I ever get in a jam, I have my, you know, anytime I get a new media guy, I have him reach out to those two and, you know, they help us. So that's good. That's good that you guys, you know, understand how, how the game is played. And there's, you know, my thing is I've been, you know, just doing wrestling stuff since 2008 with Martin Floriani. Oh and yeah. I can't do what I'll, any, I, I don't even have a, a remote product, like a real YouTuber. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. my stuff's raw. I'm not really editing things. I should just shoot a bunch of videos and upload it. You know what I mean? Like I can't yeah. do what those people can do. It's it's like not even the same product. You, you got know the personality, I mean? man. You got the voice and the excitement behind it. You know, I got a I face made for radio. Uh... I got a face made for radio too. <laughs> okay. So you guys coming back, you were the SoCon champs in 2022. I was there. I shot that. Nice. I got every match at the 2022 Southern Conference that you guys won. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, got yeah, every I match. You, you put stuff out. Yeah. I remember you putting stuff out, man. I remember you interviewing and stuff. Yeah. I did. A, I, I, yeah. And then um, last year, I did not go. Was it always, is it always that app? Yeah. So they had like a five year deal that, that, that they bid for. So I think what they got it when, uh, you know, when Kerry left, so he wasn't there to kind of fight for it. The Citadel coaching staff changed. And so basically it's a five-year deal. I think next year is their last year. And then uh, I don't know if they're going to have it at a neutral site. There's a lot of conversation about what they'll do. Um, but I don't think it'll be another five-year deal. They'll either rotate or they're going to do it in, say, like Charlotte or somewhere else. They're kind of figuring that out. Well, the MAC rotates. The MAC rotates to, like, all the different members and, you know, get a chance at yeah. it, right? Well, that's the thing He's you know, Kyle Rochelle, he's, he's in the SoCon, right? He's a member school and like, he's pissed because he doesn't get it right. Like don't blame him or he doesn't even have a chance at it. And I don't blame him either. Right. I mean, nobody wants to go there though, because everybody else in the SoCon's in North Carolina. Like it's easy for us to go up to app, um, but it'd be more expensive for everybody to go there. So I, I get his frustration, but that's, that's always the fight that he's going to have. He's going to be fighting. I mean, if I'm Chattanooga, I want to host though. I mean, they host the best in season tournament in the world <laughs> I, in my opinion yeah. the myth with that hey with Kyle, the, that's what kyle says man I, I, all right. I mean right yeah, he does a great job he yeah. ain't wrong hey he ain't wrong no he's not wrong i know he's not wrong i laugh when he when he says the same thing you're saying i just laugh because i just i just sit there. there's nothing i'm gonna i can't do anything about it so uh okay so you guys um were the champs how many dual titles have you won as the head coach and how many tournament titles in the SoCon have you won as head coach? So we won four in a row. I won two of the four and then we lost last year. Okay. And then you won the dual every, have you won the dual every year? Up until last year. So App State for the first time uh, won it outright last, last right. season. Yeah. Oh, that, I, I figured coming into the season that, you know, from the, the uh, SoCon I went to, that, that Chattanooga would have a little more to say about it because they had a really good team, I thought, coming back. Yeah. And, you know, that mixed with you guys, I thought it would be really hard for them to win for, for App yeah. State. Because like, obviously my nephew was a coach at App State, so I followed that a lot. Yeah. Wow. You guys – hey, yeah. the year you guys won it in 2022 was actually a pretty awesome year for me to watch, man, because, like, you guys just got on fire and you won a lot of semifinal matches that I don't think you're supposed to win. Yeah, and I think we actually had to uh, – everybody had to wrestle uh, above their seed in order for us to win it that year. Uh, so when we looked at the bracket and ran the numbers, and then uh, really what did it for us is we had some guys in the back uh, – you know, you know, the backside just pull it off and go on some tears, right? Like JoJo Aragona, who's a guy like – you know, he's a winner. He doesn't want to do a guy. He pulled two together and came back and won some matches on the backside. And Dom Zaccone, same thing, like – it was so one of those years where the kind of those backside warriors saved our ass because app, I think at that time, even might've had more champs that year than us uh, 
than, than we did, but we just did a better job on the backside. Like our backside warriors took care of business and they had some guys go Owen too, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's tough. I mean, and then that conference tournament, if you go Owen two, man, it really devastates your team. And I don't, it's really hard for your team to win with only eight or nine placers with the way you guys perform, the way app performs and the way you guys perform. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. So top returners from you. Um, when I was there, Tay won, Tay Gadiali won, Shannon Hannah mm-hmm. won. Um, those are the top two I can think of off the top of my head who are returning champs. Did both of those guys win last year? Yeah. Okay. Both won last year. So they're basically both- we're we're picked to win it at 74 up. And then uh I think 41, but I'm gonna redshirt Shannon Hannah, so it doesn't really count. Um and we might have had, let's see, and that's it. Yeah, so th- th- that's where we're picked to win it uh, of everybody in the SoCon. So we have Austin Murphy back, who redshirted last year. Cincinnati, Ohio. Shannon this year. Elder. Yeah, so he, Cincinnati Elder. Yeah, and he's, yeah, he's a killer. You know, he's an animal. And then, uh, you know, all those guys above him won Hopkins last year. Brothers. Hopkins. Hopkins brothers are back. You know, Tay's back, and look, he looks – I mean, I think he's going to be competing to win it. You know, I'm I'm pretty high on Tay right now, so uh, I'm excited, man. I think we got a good team, and then it's just, man, this year the energy is so good. Uh, it's just the guys are clicking right, the the vibes good. They're training hard. They're all bought in. Like uh, it's it's, man, this year feels really good. I'm really excited. I know our guys are excited. So even even some of these guys that maybe aren't picked to win it, man, they're going to be a hard team to bet against because they're going to wrestle hard. You know, they're they're all in right now. Okay, so my thing is you guys really recruit – Campbell University Wrestling recruits Ohio as good as any out-of-state school. Um, obviously, you know, I'm a big Ohio homer. You know, I'm big. I'm the big Ohio yeah. guy with the web – with the, the YouTube channel named after <laughs> – right? And the, and the company named after yeah. Ohio, right? Um, yeah. Why, how do you recruit Ohio so good at Campbell? Man, I just love Ohio. I, I, I So I'm going to be straight. Like, I've had – I've had some good PA, but I've had bad luck PA uh, with, with some PA kids in terms of like the lifestyles they choose. Ohio kids just love wrestling. All they care about is wrestling in school. And and Campbell, that's all we have is wrestling in school, you know. And so, you know, they're they're buying what we're selling. Uh, we started off with a few. Obviously, having Josh Heil is a huge pipeline for us. He seems to have the end. And, and it's not just getting Ohio kids. Uh, I think having that in through Josh of knowing who the coaches are, uh, even as an athlete, he knew who the coaches were. He knew who the guys were. It's just we can really attack the right Ohio kids that, that can be successful here. And so so um, we know who we're going after. We know what their interests are. We know what's important to them. We know what kind of mindset they've been taught. And a lot of that's through Josh. Josh does a, a, a phenomenal – he did a phenomenal job as an athlete kind of guiding us on which guys we need to go after. And now as a, you know, the recruiting coordinator, it's, it's, it's even up another level. Right. Uh, and, and, and so that's how it is, man. You get the ball going, they know each other, you know, they go, Oh, you got Winton. That kid's, that kid's a good kid. He's tough. Like, I, yeah, I, I'd want to be around him. And so, so as you get a, a couple really good ones, high caliber kids, personality wise and wrestling wise, it just gets, it gets the attention. Those kids all know each other from the same state. Right. Definitely. Uh, and then you have Tay is a Michigan guy, right? Yep, Michigan guy. You do well as well in Michigan as you do Ohio, recruiting wise. No, no, Ohio. Ohio's number one right now. Ohio and Florida. Florida makes sense because right. you're a Florida guy, right? Yeah, yeah Florida. Yeah, Florida is easy uh, to 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 know the kids and get the stories and get them out. Get them out here. Uh, who do you play place in there? Who goes in place of uh, Hannah? Uh, the one of the Riveras. Okay, and then yeah. give give me a quick line look at the lineup. Like, what could we see in the dual meet against Army? And I, I know that a dual meet, the Southern Conference in the first dual meet of the year, first you know televised dual meet of the year on UFC yeah. West, could look very different than the lineup at obviously the Southern Conference. But what do you see as a preview going against uh, Army West Point? Yeah, so we we have to wrestle that weekend as well. We're going to the Southeast Open. Um, so so I'll hold some of my young guys that maybe have a, a shot at being the guy at the end of the year. So, you know, battle at at Liberty because uh, they changed the name to Liberty. It's you know I'll probably have um, Xander Fraturis out there. 
Um, you know, he, he, he was in some tight matches last year. He was, uh, he redshirted last year, but we took him out to some events. He had some close matches with some top 20 guys. He's a really big, uh, you know, pretty slick 125 pounder. You know, he, he's got to do a lot of things right with his diet. So he'll be fun. I'm sitting Molten. Molten, uh, you know, had some surgery after season. He won't come back until Nebraska, maybe Wyoming. Uh, so that kind of opens it up for, for Xander to go in there and try to make it his early on. Uh, 33, we have Dom Zaccone, who's, man, he feels freaking good right now. Uh, so he's a two-time NCAA qualifier. Uh, he took true second last year to to Braden Palmer of UTC, who's a stud. Um, and, you know, he, he battled back and forth. We actually beat him in the duel, and then he beat he won the won the SoCon. So uh, Zaccone's one to look out for. He's freaking looking good. Uh, he's a little firecracker. Uh, 41. Uh, we're going to redshirt Shannon Hanna. He's going to go with the Bahamas. He's going to try to make the Olympic team. Uh, so he got his citizenship there. He's trying to, you know, uh, try to see if he can compete in the Olympics. Um, so he's going to bump up to 49 in redshirt and then just cut down for some events for freestyle. Uh, so we have Chris Rivera there. He started for us at 149 last season, took third in the SOCON. Uh, at 49, we bumped him up just because we had a hole. He's down to 41. Uh, then at 49, we have Justin Rivera. Justin's his twin brother. Lake Con and Prep kids, both top 10 in high school. Justin had to basically ride the bench behind Josh Heil for a year, and then he hurt his LCL, you know, but he's got like a 14-2 and two record or something, right? Um, we're pretty high on him. Uh, you know, he's he's freaking good, uh, really aggressive. Um, so we're excited to see him kind of face some top opponents, but he hasn't competed in a year. So um, that's going to be exciting for us to kind of see what he's about when, when he suits up, especially on a big stage. Uh, 157. We got your boy Chris Ernest, incoming freshman from Ohio. Funky, Wadsworth Chris, funky. Yeah, man, he's an animal, man. And I have no idea how 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 he makes the weight as easily as he does, because he's he's one of my few guys that I had make him do weight checks. And you know, of of the guys that I oversee, which I have like seven guys that I oversee and do individuals with, six of them miss all their weights, and and he makes everyone, and he's the biggest. He's like an enormous 57 pounder. He's gonna, uh, but you hey, know him. That guy's I mean, gonna be funky. a load. That guy's gonna be a load. Yeah, he's crazy. He he he's weird. He's weird, right? Like every move I teach, we're teaching a double leg. You come over and say, "Coach, is there a weird way I can do this?" I go, "No, Chris, it's a double leg. Just go like, and you'll find some way to make it weird and unique and make it fit his style, right?" He's just one of those kinds of kids, and so we're uh, we're excited to see uh, see what that looks like, man. And and you know, he took, you know. A, who do you lose to burden or something? Who's yeah, number burden. top five, whatever tough kid at the at States. And I think he might've split, maybe beat him once got slammed or something, but uh, yeah, yeah, we're high up on him. I mean, we're excited to see what he can do. Um, 65 Don Baker was a true freshman for us. Uh, he's made some huge jumps in the summertime. He was a top ranked recruit out of Virginia. Uh, we think he's going to be, we think he's going to turn some heads this year. He's, he's, he's working hard. 74 Austin Murphy's off of his, uh, red shirt, you know, we red shirted him. He was able to focus. He looks phenomenal, better than he ever has. He's matured. Um, he's going to be tough to beat, and, but he's got some early tests. I think the Army guys rank pretty high, and, uh, you know, he hasn't wrestled for a year, so that's going to be fun to see him kind of test himself on the stage. But if anyone can can show out after a year of not competing, it's going to be that guy. Uh, and then 84-97, we got the, the Hopkins brothers, the Alaskans. Um, both those guys were NCAA qualifiers. Um, I, th they'll be pretty tough, SoCon champs. And then 84-97, uh, and then heavyweight, Tay Gaddy Ollie. Screw his name up. Um, he's a beast. Like I said, if I'd say the guy closest to winning a national title today uh, is probably going to be that guy. He's uh, He's freaking good, man. He's really good. Should people be shocked if Tay Gotti Ali's in the NCAA semifinals? I I think people, yeah, I mean, they might. I won't be. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's good, and he's got some f great big guy coaches. You know, he's got he's got win in there, and he wrestles with Cobra every day. So, he's he's got a better situation than most. I mean, when I watch him move, you know, he's he's a smaller, more athletic heavyweight. What's Tay weigh, 230? 230 pounds? Is that what he weighs? About 240 now, 240, 240. Up 245 a little bit. Nah. Yeah, we keep him between 230 and 245. Yep. I so like he's getting there. And then how many years, do, like a guy like Tay, 
and the Hopkins, how many years do they have left? And is this uh, Austin Murphy's last year? Yeah, this is Austin's and Caleb's last year. Everybody else has has at least two years or more left. Because of the yeah. like with the COVID stuff, right? With the COVID stuff. And last year we we actually returned every one of our starters from last year. We didn't we didn't graduate anybody. That yeah, we were pretty young. So how do they let you guys yeah. do it? Did they let you fund um do they let you fundraise the guys who are on the fifth and sixth year aid? No, they don't they don't do that anymore. They did it for like one year, NCA allowed it for one year and then they, they said figure it out. They they just gave like a little buffer year for a year, which we we did that for our guys. Uh, now we got it. Now we got to figure it. The only ones that really hurts are the high school kids. You know, and that makes it tougher. Ridiculous! It's such a ridiculous yeah. thing. The whole notion of just giving people another year, and then you had your top guys, the Colin Moores and the Pletchers of the world, were like, "Hey, sorry, yeah. sorry, you got you got ninety five percent of the season no NCAA tournament, and then you don't get anything back." Like they almost should have gave those people another year, or give them an option yeah. for another year. In my opinion, I, I think that's just an, a, a, a misunderstanding of of our sport and the mentality of our sport, right? We all know it's NCAs is all that matters, you know. And it, unfortunately, they see it as playing season, you know, having a good time with your buddies and traveling is the most important thing. <laughs> Did you know the NCAA tournament is like what matters to those guys? It doesn't yep. even matter. Like guys can have huge wins in December and. January, but man, the ultimate thing, you know, they all, everybody's pretty good at keeping themselves too, not too high. They want that NCAA, yeah. tournament. you know, that's, that's what a lot of guys are looking forward to. And for those folks to have that taken for them and, and we were going to be in the football arena. We were going to be in the Vikings uh, stadium, right? Okay. Oh yeah. We, we actually listened to this. I had a guy, his name's Corbin Mink. He, uh, he beat like Zeke. Zeke Moisey and everything at the NCAA tournament the year before. He's a diehard Viking. When I oh. say diehard, like I like the movies. Like he had purple shoes, purple headgear. He's making puzzles of the Viking Stadium. Like he's watching it. He had always dreamed of competing in this Viking Stadium. Like I'm talking about, like, like I, I'm talking about, like a movie could be made out out of how much of a fan he is. Like I'm talking about season passes. I'm talking about figurines yeah. and uh, and, they can't, guy. and that kid like. Yeah, yeah, uh, Nebraska. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nebraska. Guy. Omaha, Omaha, shut, Omaha, shut. You know, Scott, uh, Scott, Scott Catholic, Scott Catholic, Scott, Omaha, Scott. That's it. Yeah, yeah that's the one. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, man, I've never seen 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 to something break a man like it did him because like he qualified. I, like, I had, he qualified. He didn't want to wrestle. Twenty. He qualified. Yeah, he qualified. He didn't uh, want to wrestle the next. Year. He ba basically he took the COVID year like off because I, I had to like slowly get him back because it was like such a huge cut. To him that I'm just like, hey, just let's have fun with it. You know, you're not even, you know, I had to like bring him back a little bit. Now, you know, he wishes he had competed right away, but I'm talking about like his dream would be, would have been to, to compete and be in that stadium competing like that. That like it meant more to him than anyone else. Like, and you can't convince me otherwise, even those guys maybe going for their third or fourth NCAA. It meant more to this guy competing in Viking Stadium. It, it's It was nuts, man. So you guys do a really cool thing. You know, um, the central Michigan guys, I've noticed the coaching tree, you guys are pretty tight, whether you are in the era that wrestled at central Michigan or, you know, it's like you, I, Casey Cunningham didn't coach you. Right. No, no, actually I, I saw Casey one day when I went up to visit, I went to shake his hand and he was, he was working, man. He was, yeah. he, was he was on, he was on his way out at that point. But like, it's crazy because all of you guys see, still seem pretty tight and, Central yeah. guys are tight, and you do the Chippewa Challenge, right? You bring all these coaches in who are former Chippewa coaches, right? So who all comes to the Chippewa Challenge? You, Central, Bakersfield? Yep, Bakersfield and American. Yep, those are the four. So you guys come in, you duel each other. It's in Mount Pleasant, right? No, they switched the location. It should have been in Mount Pleasant, but they switched the location every year. So last season it was at, at Central Michigan, and CMU won it. Uh, then it was at our place, an American won it, and uh, now it's going to be in Bakersfield. And it's it's cool. It's they got a big trophy, like we all mess with each other. Like Jason won, so he had like he was sending us all photos of him like sleeping with it and like taking care of it and stuff. Like so so yeah, it's 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 cool, man. And it's not just about like getting together. That is a part of it, and it's really fun. But it's really honoring Tom Borelli. You know, he's one that he ain't going to go knocking on your door for attention, but 
man, sometimes you just you just wish the guy could get some, you know, like because he just does a phenomenal job. I got screamed at last year. Oh, I didn't get screamed at, but I got an angry tweet back, maybe an angry text message from Scott Moore. Okay. I don't know, if you know what happened last year at the MAC tournament. Do you know what happened? No, I have no idea. Uh-uh. Okay. So I want to say Lock Haven, there's a punching incident, right? A heavyweight, I want to say it was Lock Haven's heavyweight punched someone. I think this is actually how the story went. So, you know, when somebody punches somebody, what's supposed to happen? Disqualified. You're gone, right? Yeah. So that doesn't happen. Nobody gets disqualified. First off, both heavyweights were punching each other. So both of them should have been. Oh, oh I did. I did see this. Yeah, I think I okay. did see. I think it was somebody put it out there. Yeah. I think I, I put it out there. It was like, and I love Scott Moore. I, Lock Haven is a yeah. great job. And I think they win like 108, 111, 108. I, I, I could be wrong, but I think I've got yeah. the gist of the story correct. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, makes sense. So, so, so Lock Haven wins because their guy doesn't get bounced. Mm-hmm. Right? And I'm like, yeah. man, Tom Brelli normally catches all those breaks. Year before, mm-hmm. uh, they're at OU, Dresden Simon. Dresden Simon, you know, doesn't it, you know, right? Justin Simon was the 41 pounder, right? Yeah, he's my he's my director of ops now. Yeah, he doesn't have, yeah, you know, he doesn't have yeah. yeah, uh, he, he, he's the best guy in the Mac, I think, pound for pound, besides yeah. no, right? Mm-hmm. He just doesn't have the tournament he's supposed to have. They, you know, and it's like Lock Haven gets hot. They win a couple of weights. Yeah. So now Lock Haven's won back to back titles. It's really weird to me that Central Michigan. Because normally they would win those titles. Mm-hmm. How good do you think it is for the MAC to have the parity that they're having right now? It's great, man. I think everybody's happy Missouri's gone. <laughs> you know, right. kind of levels the playing field in terms yeah. of uh, you know the caliber of uh, kids that they can recruit and the resources and and uh, so I yeah I think it's great for all those schools to be able to compete and 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 battle and have those rivalries and it's not just a walk away for 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 Missouri. You know, I think it's huge. Dude, dressed in Simon can wrestle, dude. <laughs> I wrestled him today. Gave me a fat really lift. good he loves wrestling. Me and him were going. He, he beats me. I choke him out, and then he takes me down. So yeah, we were having fun today. How much do you still <laughs> wrestle? How much can you still? Not, not as much. Not as often. You know. I actually I wrestled a lot last year because I had Win running the room. I've been running the room a little bit more this year just to kind of switch it up so he can get his hands on some of those big guys. Um, but yeah, this is the first year I hadn't I haven't wrestled as much this year as I have in the past, to be honest. But every once in a while, I'll, I'll grab like Dresden or some of the guys, or you know, I, I like going still. It's fun. How much has your life changed from being an assistant coach to a head coach? Man, I mean, yeah, it's changed a lot. You're, there's a lot more to it than than uh than than meets the eye. <laughs> you know, just busy and managing people, um, a, a lot of people, and 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 getting a thumb on things and making sure you surround yourself with people you can trust. And, you know, it's always working. Um, you know, I guess it depends on how competitive you are and I'm competitive. So it's really hard to put the phone down and, and, uh, you know, as an assistant, you can kind of shut off for a little bit, right. My main, you know, operative, I was recruiting. So I was just making recruiting calls. I, I knew exactly what I do. Now I got to look after everything, recruiting, fundraising, managing people, managing the guys on the team, managing training, man, you know, so, you know, it's just, uh, it, it's always moving. There's always something you can be working on and something you can plan ahead for. Biggest thing that people need to know about like Campbell university. And, and I want to help me with, get this correctly in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. Yeah. What's the biggest thing? Did I get it right? Did I get that? Was that good there? Yeah. Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. Yep. Bowie's Creek, North Carolina. What's the biggest thing you want people to know about, about Campbell wrestling and Campbell university? Yeah, I mean, it's we're we're a brotherhood, right? The big thing I always say is Camel Connections. We really care about our guys. Uh, we we put a lot into our guys. Um, it's a place you can go and get a quality education, a lot of really niche degrees. Um, and when I say we care, not just niche degrees, you're going to have careers and career opportunities and doors opened after you. By the time you're a sophomore, junior, you know we're we're contacting our alumni and 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 looking to set you up and get ideas for internships and jobs for after you graduate and. And, you know, we really we really take pride in that part of the, uh, the the process. And then obviously, you know, you're here for school and wrestling. So when you're not doing school, we're, we're doing everything we can to develop you to be a better person. So if you want to go somewhere that, you know, we're looking internal, how do we make these guys on our team, 
the best they can possibly be? How do we put all our time into these guys uh, as opposed to going and get the next best thing? Um, then we're a program you want to be a part of. We want to develop guys to beat the next best thing. So a lot of our time goes into what we currently have and less goes time into recruiting. But once you're one of us, you know, you know, we got your back. And I think that's the the biggest thing that, that, that we want to sell is, is just, I guess, the connection that you're going to make here and, you know, the amount that we're going to care about you and try to get you to where you want to be. So you as a head coach have not had an All-American yet. I believe Coach Cole had had, was it Kreiser? Yep, Kreiser was was the first All-American, yep. Okay. So you, you know, you know that you of all people know that you're judged on that, right? Like that, that's what, what matters to me. Oh, well, how was the last time they all American had all American? Whether it's fair or not, we're not going to discuss that because I think we know that yeah. it's obviously not fair. But media people, fans, parents, whoever it is, alumni, that's how they judge a program, right? Well, when's their last all American, right? Uh, can you guys kick the door down this year with not just one all American, but multiple all Americans? Yeah, I th- I think we can. I think we will. You know, I'm I'm expecting it, and and you know you can't you can't guarantee results, but uh, I know I got some guys that are that that are better than I was, you know, and 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 in a better position to do so. So, um, I'm excited. I think I think this is the year that it, that that we kind of make it happen. It's crazy because I was watching Austin Murphy wrestle in the round of 16 versus Andrew McNally in the 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 weird COVID year mm-hmm. where there's no fans, right? Do you think for that guy that feels yep. like 10 years ago, do you think that that feels like forever ago to Austin Murphy? Oh, no doubt. It feels forever. But the biggest thing about Murphy is I, I think the break was good for him. You know, he, he really matured. He really watched. He shut up, you know, because it was he wasn't able to compete. Uh, you know, he didn't feel like he was he was he wasn't really chirpy. Right. He, he just shut up and put the work in, watched what people were doing, watched what worked, watched what didn't. And so uh, he's just a way more mature, way stronger wrestler than he ever was. So um, I think when he does get the opportunity, man, he's 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 going to be special. Now, you know, I I think he's going to need some some matches under his belt. But, man, he's dangerous. Give me a couple of guys we need to look out for that we didn't talk about tonight. Well, I mean, you know, if if depending on on Moulton when he gets back, I mean, that's a guy that beat Anthony Ramos. You know, people forget about that. He actually got hurt in that match. Anthony Ramos makes the NCAA finals, so we have a guy that beat the the current number one kid in the country. You know, um, so he's somebody to look out for. Zaccone, I think, is freaking incredible right now. Obviously, take out the Aldi. Um, the Hopkins brothers, Caleb's a, a senior. What's funny is our team at the NCAA tournament, uh, we all lost, a, aside from Tay, we all lost, a, or sorry, yeah, no, Tay was two. We all lost somebody that all American or that all, you know, or to two people that all American. And it's crazy. Like when you look at the stats, like most of my guys that went to the NCAA tournament lost, both the guys they lost to ended up getting on the stand. And uh, that's, that's pretty, uh, I think, pretty unique. So I think we're a pretty talented team. I think our guys see that and, they're they're training like they believe, and that's that's the biggest thing, and and, and I believe so. We're we're pretty excited. What do you got to do to beat App State this year in both the dual and in the Southern Conference? And obviously Chattanooga is good. You got some other teams that are really starting to come on. Um, what do you got to do to beat those two top kind of teams that really challenge you year in and year out? What do you guys got to do to leave with the dual and the tournament title in the Southern Conference? Make make weight, show up and wrestle. I'm not not really too worried about that, you know. I think we're uh, we'll see where we're at in, in that time, you know. But that I think that'll take care of itself. We take care of some of these things on the front side, um, you know. I think I think we're starting out as you know, even on paper, as, as a way better team. So we just got to keep developing, you know. I know those teams are going to work. I know it's important to them, but it's just another wrestling match. I mean, all we got to do is make weight, show up, and do our thing. Who is on the staff now currently? Who is your full staff that you guys have at Campbell? Who's the full coaching staff? Yep. So it's me. My associate head is, um, you know, Wynn Mahalik. You got Josh Heil, Chris Kober. Those are all, all Campbell guys. My director of ops is Dresden Simon. And then I have a media guy, um, you know, Jake Strickland, military guy. I got a good, great trainer. So that's the full team. Is it weird? being the boss of a guy who you looked up to who probably coached you at central Michigan with uh win Mahalik. 
No, because I don't, I don't treat him like I'm his boss, right? I, I treat him as, as an equal, you know. Uh, he's associate head. I mean, you might as well call that a co-head. You know, he, he does a lot. I, I really, me and him talk a lot about the decisions we make. Um, I think it's probably weirder for other people. The only time it's kind of funny is like people will mix him up and think he's, you know, the head coach, right? Like, they'll think I'm one of the athletes sometimes because I look young. But uh, <laughs> that that's the only thing that's kind of funny is every once in a while they'll be like, oh, can you get your coach? I'm like, well, I am the coach, right? <laughs> uh, so that, that's the only thing. But no, in terms of in terms of that, in terms of how we manage things, like, you know, he, he's, uh, he really likes to be involved. That's partly why he left Michigan state is he wanted to have more responsibility and, uh, I trust him and, 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 and he has a lot of responsibility here. So, um, I wouldn't look at it, you know, like I said, you could almost look at it as co-head coach. Do you realize the dude should have probably played division one football? Do you realize that? I had heard the story about Tom recruiting him and uh, out in the snow and he was a QB. I've seen him throw the ball. I mean, he's, uh, he's athletic. He's this freak, man. I love it. He's a really good dude too, man. I like I like Coach Mahalik. Really good guy. Um, I love it, man. Uh, how many kids do you have now? I got three. I got a two year old, a three year old, and a middle schooler. Oh my good, what are wow? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your house has got to be wild, dude. It's wild. My little ones are are nuts, man. They're nuts, and but my older ones are old enough to help me out now. So when that when it gets out of hand, he can he can chirp in there for me. Boys, girls, what do you have? I got two girls. Those are my youngest. And then I have my middle schooler is a boy. Okay. And then were you at Cal Poly for a couple of years too? Yep. I was there back when Brendan Buckley was there. Um, three, Bucks three my, years or hey, so. Buck's my guy. Buck's my guy. Just so yeah. you, know. you were trying to feed him Heil. Actually, Heil came up and visited when I was at Cal Poly and yeah. uh, basically told him, told, told him on that trip that, that Buckley was basically out of there. So it was the most awkward recruiting trip. And then me and Heil both came to Campbell at the same time. It's kind of kind of wild. Oh, Welcome it was weird. Guy, yeah. Love He's him. a good dude, man. Really yeah. good dude. And then was that what are all the stops for you as far as coaching? Was it Cal Poly and then there? That's it. Yep. Straight straight out of college. I moved out to California. I was done with the winter. Now I'm back down south. Done with the winter for the most part, right? Oh, I hate the winter. Yeah, I mean the winter's here or nothing. I mean, if it snows, it's school shut down and yeah, it's it's we don't have to deal with with it like you do up north. It's horrible. It's horrible. But you know what? Today was a beautiful day. Obviously, it's a beautiful day there. Now you're not getting what Coach Borelli told you on your uh, uh, when he told you, "Oh, hey, yeah, it's always warm here in the wrestling room in Mount Pleasant, right?" <laughs> no, no. Not, yeah, he got me. He, he's smart, man. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> that dude is suit. Listen, when you talk to Tom Borelli. There's so much wisdom being imparted upon you. And I always used to just be like, man, this guy, I'm sick of his guys kicking my ass. And know, uh, why is this guy? Mm -hmm. But it's because the guy, you know, the big thing, he'll tell you a thing like you got, you got one mouth and two ears so you can listen. That's like a thing that that yeah. guy, idiot, right? Like he just like is so smart and analytical and his kids super smart and analytical. And they're just, I got a lot of respect for those guys. I think he does a great job coaching. Obviously you think pretty highly of him too, right? Oh, no doubt, man. I love love Tom. I mean, when I don't know what the hell I'm doing, which is all the time, man, I'll, I'll shoot that guy a call and he'll talk me through it. And if I can't get a hold of him, my next call is probably going to be Jason Borelli. So, uh, I mean, those those guys have done a phenomenal job, you know, building their programs and developing, you know, people. And they they know how to problem solve. You know, those those are two two of the best guys to have on speed dial, no doubt. Love it. OK. Is there anything I missed, man? Is there anything that. Any stories you got for me? Anything good you got for me? Any, any Ohio guys you got for me? Anything else you got for me, uh, Coach? No, it's nothing, man. It's, it's it's good to talk to you again, man. I remember seeing you around. Hey, yeah. I will tell one story. This one's funny. Listen, Zach, you're gonna love this one, man. And, and I, you you probably remember it. We wrestled Kent State one time, and I was wrestling a really tough guy. He was at Kent State. He ended up being an All American or two time All American. And uh, I was in that match, and he, like, got a single. He's about to take me down last second. And I did the, uh, uh, and they called injury time. And I was like, oh, man. Like, I kind of felt bad, but I, I did it. I did it on purpose. It was it was on purpose. And you saw right through it. And uh, I ended up winning the match, okay, Beca basically because of that. And after the duel, man, you called me out. And I needed that, man. Like, I remember you interview goes, how's your leg? Is your leg okay? You going to be able to wrestle next week? Like, on this interview. And it was just like. 
the funniest thing. I tell my guys about it all the time, but it just like really, I need, it was a good thing though, you know, like uh, that, that you did it, but it was just, I just always remember you doing that. What's up? Did the tactic work? Yeah, I mean, I quit doing it. I never, I never no, did but it again, was, you know? But it was a good tactic. Oh, the tactic to win? Match. Oh, yeah, it worked. It worked. He was going to beat me. Yeah, no doubt. He he was, uh, it, dude, their corner was losing it, man. I'm not mad at you. I it. love it. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah you, I, hey, if I find that interview the next time or something, I'll shoot it to you. But it's, uh, Ryan Flo yeah, you, you, knew, you knew exactly what happened. You could see right in the interview that, that you know, that I did it. So it was just, it was just pretty funny. But you won the match. Oh yeah, I won the match. Yeah, I think it was by Danny is. Mitchell. It was Danny Mitchell. It was. That's who it was. And then he he spanked me in the uh, conference that year. That kid was freaking good, man. He just I couldn't stop that little Mister X single, that inside reach. He was he's so a, freaking good at it. Hammer, man. He was a hammer. You know, he was in the weight class. He was in a really tough. The one of the tough weights I think you were at at thirty three, and that was the yeah. year he was sixth, and he lost to. Graph, I want to say for third and fourth. I mean, he was in a hammer yeah. class. I mean, you were in the weight class, so you obviously know. Oh nine, oh nine, Omaha. It had to have been oh nine. Yeah, it had to be my. No ten, year. ten, ten was Omaha. I thought it was oh nine when that happened, but I could be wrong. It might have been ten. I don't know. No, it was oh nine. It was oh nine. It was oh nine, hundred percent. Okay, and that was the year okay. that uh, the the Cathal guy hit the wing and roll. Oh yeah, Oli to Oli. Yeah, he hit him in a junior high move. He hit him in Dude, a junior. <laughs> listen to me. The the your guy was it Tony? Yeah, Tony Dali. Yeah, Tony Dali. Oli, we call him Oli for short. Yeah, Oli is stealing this guy's yeah. lunch. Freight train double action. Just re- just mauling him right, like yeah. not close. And the dude's trying like all this just stupid garbage. And the dude and your guy, your your guys are also solid. Like Tom Borelli's guys are also solid. Yeah. I, I just I was like, they never get caught with garbage. Like, did he wing and roll them? Garbage. Yeah, it was crazy. Little kids. Yeah, you were doing the it he had a minute junior high move. Like, dude, man, it was the funniest thing, man. It was I that guy was crazy. Like looking over at him, like that wrestler was just nuts. He was always rolling. And we kept yelling, cut him, cut him, cut him. And Ole, like, yeah, wouldn't cut him. He just made one mistake. He just wouldn't cut him that one time. Dude, you know, and just boom. Him. He was smashing him. The only way we lose is if that guy gets on top of us or he elbow rolls us or whatever. Because that guy was a freak. That guy was, yeah, he was guard, but not on top. That guy was a freak, man. He was just, he even looked weird. Like, I think, I don't even think he finished the season. I think he, like, missed weight twice or three times that year. Like, he was a nut, man. I hey, was, it was hey. wild. He made it at the next year at 157, and Andrasi tried to turn the bid down. He's oh like, my God. our guy doesn't deserve to go. Take the next guy. That's nuts, man. The guy didn't That's want to crazy. cut weight. The guy didn't want to do anything they told him. And he was just like, yeah. I don't think this guy is into this. Go to the – they were like, no, you got to take the bid. You got to take That's the bid. That's wild. And that was when the Mac – just started to get into the like because you were in the 16 mac weren't you you were you wrestled in the 16 mac a couple times didn't you yeah yeah i, I wrestled in the big one yeah no okay. you wrestled in the in the 16 one was six i wrestled in both yeah i wrestled in yeah, both i wrestled in the big one and then i wrestled when it had um you know northern iowa and and old dominion was, mizzou yeah it had everybody man it, it was, was a really good convert i got wrestled in the six team one. Yep. Because I think the last six team one was yeah. at Ohio U in 2012. Yeah. And, and that's the thing that, that reminds me a lot of like what the SOCON is today. You know, that, that's me... my point. Like, that's where I was going to go with it because the SOCON gets bids like the Mac used to get bids. Yeah. Like, not. Yeah. I mean, there's I mean, usually 15 bids. Guys. You got to win it, man. And I tell my guys, if you're not good enough to win it, you don't deserve to go. You know, that's just the way it is. So, um, you know, we get bids. We do a decent job at at, at getting them. But, yeah, you got to win it. No doubt. Yeah, definitely. Well, Coach Santos, thank you for the time. Thank you for reminding me of the story <laughs> where uh, you managed to game the system and win the match. Hey, right, I'll send it to you, too. I'm not, I'm not proud of it. it. It's I been long it. back and look at it.
Did I did I say in the interview that you were faking? Oh, you all but said it. You were like, "Hey, uh, wait till you see it. You're gonna die." You're, I I laugh at it. I've showed people this before. You were like, "How you know? How, how's your knee? Your knee? You know? Are you, you think you're gonna be able to walk to the? You know, like." <laughs> and I knew I was kind of, "Oh, I, you know, I think it'll be okay. I think, uh, oh yeah, I feel fine. You know, I was too embarrassed to." <laughs> oh, that's good. All right, hey, oh. thank you for the time, Coach Santos, Campbell University Wrestling. Stick around. Thank you for uh, coming on uh, yet another Barbarian podcast. All right. Thanks, Ben.